Previously on my expedition to Antarctica, I boarded the Ocean Endeavour in southern Argentina and endured a two and a half day journey across the dreaded Drake Passage. Someone got very sick and we've had to stop and they need to do an emergency. And having finally made it across safely, we arrived at the ice and everybody was just totally blown away. Well, this has exceeded expectations. Oh my God. You know, I can see someone's in tears. This is a very, very powerful moment. But now the real fun can begin. It's time to gear up Get on the zodiacs and begin exploring this incredible continent. So, basic layer is just going to be a t-shirt. This is going to be my thermal. <laughs> then I'm going to throw uh, a light jumper on top and then I'm going to have this puffer jacket. Obviously there's another coat that goes on top of that. So that's one, two, three, four layers on my upper. And then I've got this like cheap pair of jogging bottoms, which I'll wear as the base layer on my legs. And then on top I'll wear these hiking pants. They're not really waterproof, but uh, I think they'll have to do. So yeah, these are the layers that I'm going to experiment with. And then we'll go try on the boots and the big jacket in the mud room. Mud room is busy. <laughs> this is my little situation. Let me put you down and I'll try on. We don't get to keep this one, unfortunately, but we do get to keep this after the trip. Let's see if mine fits. <laughs> These are the boots. I'm ready to put my beanie on and go outside and see how it all feels. Expect incredible scenes, dramatic weather, and loads of surprises in today's video. So sit down, relax, subscribe if you're new, and let's get out there and explore Antarctica together. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, Jackie. Here. There you go. Here we are, nice and snug on the Zodiac. How you feeling, mate? Good. I feel good. These are the Zodiacs, which is a fancy word for a dinghy, really, except these are much more durable and can really deal with cruising through the slush and the ice, which will enable us to hopefully find perfect landing spots so we can all touch down and explore the continent on foot. They have about 12 different Zodiacs and they try their best to mix the groups and the drivers so that everyone can have a different experience each time we go on a Zodiac cruise. The guys in the red jackets, these are the drivers and they're incredible. They come from all over the world and are extremely experienced and knowledgeable when it comes to the continent. Apart from keeping us safe, their main job is to get us as close as possible to the wildlife without causing any stress or harm. And as you'll see later in this episode, they do a pretty good job at this. Penguins to our left. Oh, we can hear them now. It was incredible to be cruising through the slush, the ice, and just admiring the incredible scenes all around us. But it wasn't long until he got a call saying that they had found a perfect landing site. So we made our way, getting ready to step foot on solid ground. Welcome to Antarctica. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You are now standing on continental Antarctica. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so super cool to be here at Nico Harbour. Behind us, that glacier is very active. Can sometimes be a big crack, a big calving, and there can be a big wave over here. That's why we ask you not to linger on the shoreline. 
Um, in terms of things to do, so there's two flagged paths. One right now, this penguin is blocking. You can see there we've got some very respectful humans letting the penguin do its thing. And you can kind of hang out and watch all the ama amazing penguin behavior. Okay, so we have about 905-ish breeding pairs of gentoos here. So it's a really, really great time to be watching all the behavior of the penguins. Other things you can do is you can head up in that direction. For always following the flies pass, please don't go off the route. And in that direction, you can actually gain a bit of elevation. There's some switchbacks and you can get up to a viewpoint looking over the whole bay and there's more penguins up that way. If you want to do that one, I would recommend doing it first um, because I would ask you to be back here at 11.30. Okay, so 11.30 um, for back here and then we'll pop you back to the ship, okay? One of the penguins just came down the hill and I just got to give him the right of way. What a magical moment. He's posing for a picture. Do you want to take a picture? Okay, here we are on foot on the land of Antarctica, right next to a big colony of Gentoo penguins who smell like fresh fish. And half of them are having a nap, probably had a big breakfast. And then the rest are awkwardly scattering across the ice. As you heard, the lady gave us two options. We can walk along the coastline, or we can go up the hill, which is definitely what I want to do. something absolutely unbelievable just happened so we're doing the little hike up to the viewpoint past all the penguins as you can see and then there was this really loud screeching sound and we turned around and down in the bay next to the zodiacs with the people who are already on their way back to the boat there's a humpback whale just swimming right next to them. It's coming up again, taking a breath, right next to the boat, right next to the Zodiacs. This is the first hour <laughs> of, of the uh, expedition on land and that's already happened. And the kayakers, the kayakers can probably hear the whale so they're probably desperate to get an encounter. That would be magical, absolutely magical. I made it to the top, the viewpoint, overlooking a colony of penguins, the bay, the ship, the zodiacs, the other tourists, the guides, and somewhere in there now, a humpback whale who's down feeding, taking a big breath. The gentleman who steers our zodiac told us his name's Brent. He said that they lay their nests up here because when all of this melts in the next few months, at the height of summer, this will be the first part that's exposed to the rocks because this species of penguin have to lay their eggs on the rocks. They don't lay them on their feet like the emperors. I just hope to God that it's coming across on film how beautiful this is. I've traveled around the world, six continents now, and I've never seen anything like this in my entire life. <laughs> What's so, up, man? Uh, Is this beautiful? Yeah. I was just saying that it's like the nearest thing for us to be an astronaut. This yeah. is the nearest thing to getting in a rocket and going to an alien planet 
because we've just never seen anything like this, have we? Yeah, it's very interstellar. Yeah. It really is. It's beautiful. Yeah, really beautiful is certainly an understatement. To be surrounded by all of this beautiful ice and active glaciers, penguin colonies, views of this incredible harbour, and humpback whales swimming around us, it was really hard to convey the emotions of standing on this viewpoint on mainland Antarctica. I took plenty of time off camera to soak it up and to breathe in this experience before it was time to head back aboard, refuel and relocate to a new area. We have an itinerary today that included two separate trips on the Zodiacs and it's fair to say that Antarctica had completely blown us away and we couldn't wait to see what else it had in store for us next. Best day ever. <laughs> and we're only halfway through. On an expedition like this, you rarely spend any time in your cabin. The sun never sets and the views are just incredible. Plus, with the open bridge policy, it's just too much fun to watch the captain and the crew navigate the ice. We also saw this luxury cruise ship passing by, and we learned that tickets on board this vessel can reach up to $40,000. But there was something interesting that our crew found out from theirs via the radios. It seems like we were having much more luck with the conditions and the wildlife than they were having. What's interesting is our crew are communicating with that other ship the posh ship. They've been at sea for four days and they have not had the chance, they've not had the conditions or the weather to land. So everybody on the posh, on the posh cruise, they haven't been able to go onto the continent yet and explore on foot. So we've, it shows you how lucky and incredible the conditions were this morning. One of the other reasons we changed location was to find a place to go camping. Yes, that's right. Camping on the ice overnight is an optional extra activity and around 40 other passengers opted for the camping, including me, and we couldn't wait to try it. I mean, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity, right? However, when we arrived at the campsite, the conditions were just not fit for camping, sadly. The once solid ice island that they use as the campsite had broken up due to the warmer weather this time of year. And as much as the crew had tried, they just couldn't find an alternative location for the camping activity. We will work hard in order to, to fill the gaps and to give you the best experience that we can with the conditions that we have. It was a big blow for me and Michael. We were gutted and so was everybody else who'd signed up. However, the crew decided that the conditions were just fine enough to do another optional activity, this time the famous Polar Plunge. There's an activity on this tour called the Polar Plunge and we were never told when it was gonna happen, but we all knew that it was a potential. They give you the option to jump in, in your swimming costume, into the actual minus one degree Celsius water. If you've wanted to watch me jump into freezing cold water, <laughs> this is not the video, and I'm sorry. But here's the thing, I, it's, it's literally, it's, it's, that's my worst nightmare. We're watching the guys jumping in, and we, do we have FOMO, guys? No. No, no we do FOMO. not have FOMO. Here at all. Here goes Carl Watson, Here the man, Carl the myth, Watson. the legend.
I stand by my decision to not jump in. Freezing water might be a great way to release endorphins and boost your immune system and the footage would have looked great for the video. But for me, I'll just stick to the hot showers and spicy food as my adrenaline rush. Thank you very much. <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> <laughs> Feeling better now. <laughs> Late that evening, the crew put on a new activity to make up for the lack of the camping, and they put on an optional Zodiac cruise at sunset. Of course, when you're this far south and at this time of year, the sun never actually sets below the horizon. So this would just be the nearest thing to a sunset cruise. And I mean, I just couldn't miss out on this opportunity. So I obviously jumped at the chance. It was at no extra cost. And why not? Good evening, ship. Now that everyone's left, I'd just like to let you know <laughs> tonight's karaoke night. And... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Jump back in, swim back. <laughs> <laughs> The cruise was only an hour long, but it was just absolutely glorious. We just cruised around this beautiful harbour and marvelled at the incredible landscapes. We saw two species of seal, including a leopard seal, which was taking a rest after feeding on some nearby penguins. A bit too gruesome to show that on YouTube. Around the corner, we also saw this scientific facility, not used it this time of year, and so the penguins had come in and claimed it for themselves. And overall, this cruise concluded a truly unforgettable first 24 hours here in Antarctica. Good morning. Welcome to another day aboard the incredible cruise to Antarctica. This is our second day, our second full day of exploration during this expedition and look at the weather. Look at the conditions. Zero wind, blue skies, incredible glaciers, mountains and a beautiful <laughs> bay for us to use as a base today. This is absolutely the definition of paradise. Good news, bad news. Good news is, it's still beautiful outside. Bad news, they couldn't find a landing spot, so we can't step foot on the land on this particular expedition, on this outing. Um, they just couldn't find a safe spot for us to get onto the land, which is obviously gonna happen quite often with all of this ice. No, this is Paddy. Oh, that's Paddy. Just another. <laughs> Time to go. Look at this. Look at that. Lovely day, eh? Lovely day. Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> we can try. big groups of penguins coming in together from being out at sea and they I love the way they just swim and then they land and then they climb up the rock face and find their friends some of them are going out to feed some of them are coming back in the water it looks like crystal clear oh there's a jellyfish right here look at this Just as we were admiring the penguins, a huge leopard seal's head just came out of the water. He doesn't look like he's hunting, but he's massive. Double the size of the one we saw yesterday. Yeah. Huge. There he is, he's massive. He's massive. Is it a leopard shit? Is it a leopard seal? Leopard seal. That here is a leopard. There's a beautiful little seal just lying on the snow having a little sunbathe and all the penguins having a little swim and we're just watching some of the, the penguins trying to get up and jump onto the, onto the beach but there's a lot of snow and ice which is the reason why we couldn't land because we can't find a safe spot to land and the penguins are struggling to find an easy spot to get back onto the land so they can lie down and chill could conditions be any better than this, eh? Hello. I think that perfect really was the correct term for this morning. And once we were all on board, we did move location on the hunt for yet another beautiful spot to explore. In the afternoon, after our lunch, we pulled up to this gorgeous spot and we had another beautiful Zodiac cruise. The weather held up and we saw even more wildlife than last time, but this time we saw a few species that we had yet to see on this trip. The kayakers pushed on through the slush and the ice and everyone involved and everyone around was just soaked up in this experience to the fullest. 
Even our guides told us that weather like this is very rare, and so I think we all kind of understood that. And that's why I didn't film that much in the afternoon. I kind of just sat on the Zodiac and just, yeah, took it all in. Later that evening, since the weather was still quite calm, they actually put on a barbecue on the deck. So we all came up together and celebrated a perfect day aboard the ship and a perfect day here in Antarctica. If it looks freezing cold, it's because it's freezing cold. <laughs> In the next and final episode from Antarctica, we finally get to experience the more brutal side of Antarctica weather. Ah! We battle the elements and the seas to discover more of this continent's secrets and natural wonders. Then we'll make our way back across the Drake Passage, but this time with much less qualified people at the helm. Oh, the two must be there. Yeah, if you enjoyed today's episode, please leave it a like below and subscribe to the channel. After Antarctica, we're heading up to Patagonia and plenty of adventures await there. So, I'll see you soon and thanks for watching.